Thank you. Thank you, Pravina. Uh, good to be introduced by you. Uh, mindset. Hmm. Uh, a very interesting topic from every educator's point of view. We have been going through a lot of turmoils in the recent past of COVID and everything. We had a set of mind when we took the training for being a teacher professionally by choice or by the depending on the circumstances, whatever the reason had been, uh, we when we became teacher, we never knew that we will be actors too. But we are today, we all are, we are able to connect with each other in front of the screen. We have taken a lot of challenges in the recent past. And our thought process, our mindset has changed. We have also gone through a lot of life coaches sessions, a lot of uh, motivational talks, where people have been told that how the thought needs to be directed in a direction which leads to achievement, without doubts. Uh, that was a kind of thought process which we developed over a period of time. That is the area where success and the so-called, I won't name it failure, but so-called not being that, that much successful was a big talk in between, you know. There are few who are very successful in life. There are few who have big dreams and they are still struggling to achieve it. But in this period of time, I myself have, saw, have seen it very clearly that success is something which is very much achievable by all of us. I am underlining it. It is the taboo. Let's break the taboo and say that it is actually achievable by all of us. And how is it? Now that trick I have learned, I have passed it on to the uh, teachers. Many of us know sitting across the table, you also know sitting across this screen, you also know. But for me, the question is, isn't it too late that we have learned it? Why not to pass it on in an earlier age to our students with whom we are working or not only students with the mass where we are able to connect with? To do so, let me put one question through. Uh, Praveena, I would like you to uh, participate. Do any one of you know the full form of sir? We often call our colleagues, the male colleagues, sir, and the female colleagues, madam. So if you can tell me a full form of sir. Praveena? No, ma'am, I'm sorry, but um, I have no idea. You know. In, uh, in the last, uh, say, around two, three years before, I uh, came across a book which says, Sir, the full form is slave I remain or servant I remain. And that was why the Britishers were using this term for people uh, like us to work under them. I had such a shock of my heart that I slowly had a, a pull within that I will not call anyone sir. Why should I remain someone's servant? Why should I remain a slave for someone? So I, I would start saying, Mr. Singh, Mr. Mehta, not sir, Mehta sir. And the disconnect I could feel every time to start the topic, I would feel that disconnect because that was the thought process which was which sinked in so fast. Every time I call, sir, 
every time it reminds me of the statement that I knew. Then I started researching. Then I found out that it is a kind of a set of people who had given it that meaning. But the generally, it is a kind of gesture. Gesture in the sense, a kind of giving respect to your colleague. So you use that word, sir. Ma'am also for the same, same reason. Madam is where we use it in the form of authority, where we use authority. Ma'am is actually any woman to give the respect to show your etiquette. You use such kind of words. Now I said it was a kind of a thought. With my thought, what was added to it? Emotion. My emotion was added. When I came to know the emotion was anger, I'm no one's servant. I'm no one's slave. How can I be a slave? So my emotions, my ego, that flowed in. Thought plus emotion gave me an action. My denial of using that particular word and the result was I changed into Mr. So-and-so and so-and-so and so instead of using that word. That means your mindset is a thought plus emotion plus action, which will give you a result. As simple as that, it is a simple mathematics. We use big words like positive thinking, don't have negative thoughts. We often share this with our students by counseling them, our subordinates by counseling them, that this is what is not helping you. You have so much negative thought inside you. If we go back, look into our childhood, our when we were tiny ones or when we had our tiny ones. Come on, wake up in the morning, wake up, good morning, good morning, good morning, go brush your teeth, go to the loo, then take your bath, get ready, take your school bag, have your tiffin, go to school. It was a habit set. Can't we set the thought as a habit? Right direction. That's what we call positive thinking. I can do it. I can do everything. It is so easy to demoralize our small ones in the class. You cannot, you won't be able to, even for a meeting when we are there. When I suppose I call a meeting with my teachers and then I put a thought up into it. I know this too will be as usual late. Always they come late. I am already preoccupied. My mindset is there that they will be late. And once they come late, I'm not there to ask reason. Rather what we say, I knew you will be late. See the thought process. If I would have got a thought in my mind. I interrupt you, ma'am. I yeah, please. Yeah, I got a question here related to the children. Uh -huh. so one person wants to know, my young learner is always bored or refusing to engage. How to implement the growth mindset in him? Now, now uh, can I get to know the age of that learner? Because age-wise, now, as long as that person gives you the answer, I will go for a general knowledge. Now, what happens? Boredom is already in our mindset. We have that, that when I am trying to engage, you will see a teacher tries to engage or a mother tries or a father tries or any XYZ try to engage a 
child, we already have the concept in our mind that my child is going to be feeling bored after this span of time. My preparation is also in that way. I am already thinking of that to happen. More than the child feeling bored at that time, my potential also starts falling. I have already given up. I have a mindset that my child is going to feel bored after this. It's my own mindset. First work on our mindset. Then we'll think about the others. Once we have thought that it will go in one flow. So we have balanced it in that way. One activity with a, a lecture, with a, a presentation, with everything. Now, if I put it across in a class activity. Now, I am teaching grammar. Uh, and I have a topic in that. Uh, like, uh, say, uh, something abstract, abstract, uh, abstract nouns, suppose. So, can that be put into an activity? We go to the class, we know we are going to teach abstract noun and what we start, we go through the definition, we give them example, we tell them to do the exercise. Whereas, to make it much more sinked in into the brain of the child, if we give them an activity which has a group activity, you are involving all kind of learners together. Now you put a group activity to them and you say, create an advertisement with an abstract product. You are a salesman you are going to sell that product to someone. You are creating an advertisement which has a jingle in it. You are creating the cost price and the market availability and why it is the uh, that the customer should buy your product. And then you are creating a market review and you are giving a presentation. You are putting everything together. Do you think a child will ever feel bored in doing that activity? In return, what you have done? You have taught the topic. After that, give n number of worksheets to your children. They will automatically do it. Because you didn't have a blockage in your mindset, the child did not feel that it is something to get bored or it is something that I will never be able to do. Because you are engaging every kind of learner in your process. There are few who are very good researcher, but there are few who are very good. All the transdisciplinary skills are there. Imagine all your transdisciplinary skills. Yes, Praveena. Yes, sir. Uh, Ma'am, like we have one question here. One hmm. wants to know what is a fixed mindset and what is a growth mindset? Now, when I say a fixed mindset is something that you have developed over your time. You have, like we often, when we go to the literary meaning, we do not emphasize on the surroundings. We are not emphasizing on the surroundings. Your mindset differs when you are being made to think that you can. Now, if there is, like if a pair are there at home, when there are siblings at home, there are times when there is a comparison. There are times when parents are so generous I have taken a lot of uh, parent workshop where the parents go beyond their generosity and they say, you know, I could not do ever like this. How can I expect my child thinking positive because I have never thought positive. So this also sinks into the brain of the child. My parents were never positive. So it banta hai. I can be also like them. Now the growth mindset is what we are providing to them as educators, because we don't only educate our children, we educate beyond. 
we are trying to educate the society as educators when our task is that now it is first you change and what you give in is the picturization of what they actually want to be the result now we all know we talk about subconscious and conscious mind and everything now we also know that our subconscious mind is able to see only not big thoughts visualization they need visualization so are we able to make the child visualize what the child wants to be in the right direction now when the child keeps on watching when we keep on watching that we are successful success is there because that's the thought that's the emotion every success has a happy emotion attached to it both together will lead us to take the right action and the right action all this three together will give us a right result as simple as that it is a very simple format we have to sing that in not at the age when i will be 50 very soon that i come to know this this children they need to know yes pravin i think there is another question yes ma'am so what is the right age to introduce growth mindset approximately i mean appropriately i think since the child is able to understand growth mindset starts from there now see when it is a little sunny outside and our child wants to go out is playing we go hold their hand and put them inside in the sun uh, in the in the pool place i'm sorry we take them no this is going to be wrong for your health why the child may survive but you did not or they can go through all such things what you could not a child may know which part of the of the sharp object the child has to hold whether the handy part or in the knife but we need not give the original knife but nowadays you will see that the uh, the kitchen wares are given as as the objects you know for every mother back at home the two treasure island especially if uh, uh, people like us they have two treasure island at home one is their kitchen the second is the place where they do, uh, do prayers irrespective of whatever religion they they believe they would keep that safe from their child's reach when they are small kids but let them go in you you just mix few things and give and say you know my dear child i'm so busy i want you to help me in finishing this work can you segregate somehow it got mixed the chana and the rajma the eye and hand coordination starts from there and we will only as psychology people we will say it's the eye and hand coordination as a teacher we will, we know that but we don't know that it also build in the confidence the growth mindset of the child oh my god i am important for my mama mama has given me such a task which mama could not do yes ma'am so related this you are you are explaining but uh, somebody asked what steps should we take to help a growth mindset thinking over uh, our fixed mindset it is explore give them chance to explore to go beyond don't restrict them to the textbooks and the books given let them go beyond now see those who are here from ib uh, background we know that uh, there are uh, the six weeks as divided in the classroom the tuning uh, in and then uh, uh, finding out sorting out making connection uh, going further taking action all this weeks it is for every child now there also our mindset is fixed that till taking action everyone can go 
going beyond is only for the hot students. No, dear. It is for everyone because in this five weeks, I have to put my class at par. If I put my class at par, the next week is for everyone to go beyond. Every child needs to go beyond and they go beyond in different directions. They are all innovators. We have to stop thinking that my this percentage of the child in my class, this percentage of my students are not up to the mark. Stop thinking that everyone, it is the the understanding ability of the child, the learning skill of the child is not in our hand. We don't know what actual learning uh, skill of this particular child works with, or I personally am not capable of teaching his learning skill. So that child is falling back. Everyone has it, but their learning skills are different. That's the only, and growth mindset is there in every human being, you, me, and every XYZ, anywhere in this world, everyone wants to explore, everyone wants to know, curiosity is there and built in us everywhere. We only, as facilitators, we have to ignite. And when we do that, the surprise package which we get is we come to learn many things that we in this day age do not know from our tiny ones at home as well as at schools, you know. Stop thinking of the syllabus only. Growth mindset is beyond the syllabus also. We can even push our syllabus beyond. We can take our chapters beyond. Why do we say that this is not for your age to learn? This taboo needs to be removed from our educational system. Growth mindset will work only then when we have stopped doing that. The the taboos that this is this much this much is only for this year i had set my questions for this we so all have for another question now yes, for please, please. now what yeah. if false growth mindset this is the second time i thought this question came up Growth mindset is then you are able to explore. No, no. They're asking about false growth mindset, ma'am. False oh. growth mindset. False growth mindset. Okay. Now, false growth mindset is, I put it in very simple words. It has two effects, you know. One is when we are dreaming something, None of our dreams are as like not achievable. But when it is that we keep on changing the dream factor. Today I want to be a cricketer. Tomorrow I want to be a film star. Tomorrow, uh, day after tomorrow, I want to be a businessman. I uh, the next day I have something else, then something else. It is time pass for every child. It's a time pass, you know. When, when they, they sit, their action is not aligned with what they want to be. Two different, you are putting your legs on two different boats and you are trying to have a ride. It does not happen. You're working in some direction. You're thinking of something else. You are working as a, a person who wants to earn a lot. And, uh, and uh, uh, you are, means you're thinking of earning a lot and you are sitting idle at home. Money will not flow to you. That is one. And the next is many people term your mindset to be a false mindset because they are not able to, uh, to help you across in achieving that what you want. 
Okay, that is again in our terms we call it as it is a false mindset set for that uh, person. Yes, Praveena. Good to know, ma'am. So my last question, since we are running out of time now. Uh -huh. uh, this, this is the last question. Somebody wants to know what made you choose this uh, wonderful topic. Uh, it is that I have been into a kind of uh, to do and not to do and do and not to do, uh, which made me explore beyond. And when we, I got the results, then because I have been uh, blessed with very good mentors in my life, I thought it is time that I pass it on to the others so that they can benefit from that. Because I know if I pass it on correctly with five or six people at least, they will again increase the number. This five, six will again be able to pass it on to the others. It is the more we grow, and especially with our children, it is so, so very important that they get to know it now. This is the time when they are setting their dreams. If they know, if they are confident that they can achieve, it is not impossible for them to achieve. I absolutely agree, ma'am. And uh, now the questions are completed. Thank yeah. you, Swati Sarkar. We have now completed the round of questions. On behalf of School Journal of Education and SchoolReformer.com, we like to thank you for the talk and for patiently answering all the questions, ma'am. I'd like to also thank the participants in the meeting and we will be closing this now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.